Hi, dear viewers. Today, I'm joining a conversation with David West, the author of The Spy Who Sang the Armada, uh, which is a Fox book in a series of Sir Anthony Stardom Adventure. It's a pleasure to have David feature the show today. How are you doing, David? I'm very well, thank you, Peter. And thank you very much for having me on your show. It's a, it's a real honour. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you here. So, David, could you tell us about your book, the Spy Who Sank the Armada, which is a first book in the series of Sir Anthony Stardom Adventures. What inspired you to write The Spy Who Sank the Armada? Well, I, I was I was I was planning to maybe start writing a set of crime novels because my wife and Claire and, and I are great fans of murder mysteries. Mm. And I'd I'd made a mind I'd made a mind map of, of all the qualities that I thought my detective might have. Um, but the the spark didn't seem to be hitting the kindling. Nothing was oh. igniting. And then I was reading a biography of Sir Francis Drake, and I came across this passage. I'll, I'll read it to you. The time had come when Walsingham was no longer satisfied with news that came to him at second hand, whether from Santa Cruz's kitchen or from the governor of Guernsey's reports of the gossip on Breton ships or in ruined taverns. He needed an accurate and detailed stream of in information about the number of Phillips ships, their tonnage, the sailors who would man them and the soldiers they would carry. Thanks above all to Standen, he got every detail he wanted. Now, Standen was my mother's maiden name. Oh. So I took a great interest in this guy, Sir Anthony Standen, and I read everything that there is to know about him. Uh, and it, it just seemed like the most incredible story. And I thought, why have I never heard of this man? And um, in in reading the known story of Sir Anthony Standen, I kept asking myself, why did he do that? And how did he do that? And I came to the conclusion that the only way to answer those questions was to write the book myself. So wow. when lockdown came along, uh, I started writing. And uh, yeah, within, within eight months, I'd, I'd got a book. <laughs> That's great. That's great. I really love the motivation and the start to the making of the fourth series. And that's quite great. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. yeah. And, and the other thing, actually, is that on Ancestry, I did, I did the research and I eventually discovered that my 10th great grandfather, yeah. uh, Edmund Standen, was Anthony Standen's younger brother. Wow. So we are related. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. I think I made a question about that with you in Time Parks. Probably I asked a question with a Facebook there about via Messenger. And I was asking if the standard you're referring to was this particular standard. It is, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, David, following on from the first series and without giving much information away, could you tell us a bit about the second series of the book, That's Fire and Heart? Fire and Earth, yes, there we go. Yeah, um, beautiful. Basically, the the last thing we know about Sir Anthony Standen's life in, in, in the, the historical record mm. is that uh, he, he left England to go to Rome oh. and he had been specifically banned from going to Rome by King James I. Wow. And I just thought, well, what, what would overrule a king's direct order and i thought only love i thought what if it what if he had um the love of his life in rome or somewhere near rome mm. and what if he had children and i thought well if he had children then he can pass on his spying skills to the children and we can continue uh, a series of books right up to the present day if i if i live long enough um <laughs> so so um, I, I started from where the spy who sank the Armada ended, and I started going through history a year at a time, oh, wow. looking for something that would something that caught my imagination and would interest me. And the first thing I came across was the the burning at the stake of um, Giordano Bruno, oh, who was a, an, a who was a, a a philosopher, a writer, and a scientist. He was burnt at the stake in Rome for the heresy 
of writing that the the earth revolved around the sun rather than the other way around. Mm. Um, and then I kept paging forward a little bit further, and I found that a, a few years after that, um, Pope Paul V hired an assassin to murder um, Paolo Sarpi, who was a Venetian cleric and philosopher and scientist. Oh. Um, and that was really because Paolo Sarpi was leading a... Um, a legal battle against um, the Vatican um, in terms of sort of papal control over 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 Venice and the papal states. Um, so 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 I got interested and 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 I thought well, the, I, I, I'm always looking for the conflict. You know where is the conflict? Mm. And the conflict seemed to be around the the conflict between faith and reason. So so that's the theme that runs through that book. So it's a it's a murder mystery with a with an underlying, um, like the story of Galileo and and the heresy of believing that the uh... yeah I I love the scent of your book and I'm a good fan of modern mystery I love it so much yeah it's very great and I yeah. love the stories hearing from you so far have been amazing now David I want to ask you you know as authors we all have different ways of reacting to feedbacks and criticism of yeah. our works. And I'm curious to know your opinion about criticism. How do you react to negative criticism of your book if you've ever had one in time past? Um, I, I have had negative criticism. Um, and if it if it if it's correct, yeah. you know, then then the first, you know, then thank you very much for pointing that out. And and I'll look at uh, well, is it is this the time to sort of Cool. amend the book and update the manuscript um yeah. in in the, the kindle and the all the all the other paperback and audio formats or if it's if it's incorrect then just forget about it because there's not much you can do about it but, but any, any 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 criticism that's um you know that's helpful um i had a, I had a friend of mine at the golf club who who said you know that that basically I'd used the wrong character name um, oh. in an early part of the of the Sarantini, of the, the spy who sank the Armada, and I couldn't believe it. But I got the book out. Oh, you're right. You're right. Oh. You know. Oh. Um, so so I, I went straight back and sort of amended the man manuscript and put it out. But oh. but that that they have. I mean, and when you get a two or a one star review on Amazon, it's um. It's if it's a, if it's got a review, then at least you know why you've got a, yeah. a low a low review. And despite the fact that that criticism might be completely unjust, at least you know you know if if there's a two star review and nobody's <laughs> or two star rating, nobody's put a review, then you're you're thinking, well, is the, is is there something hidden there in, that's wrong with the book? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I love your opinion about this, and I know that you know readers have their ways of reviewing books and giving out the opinion of it. And I'm also curious, yeah. you know, uh, David, could you tell us a bit about the third book series? You know, that's uh, the suggested assassin. I'd love oh, to tell us suggested... a bit about it. Yeah. Okay. So here, here is the suggested assassin. Yeah. Have... And again, it was a it was a question of paging forwards through history. Oh. Uh, and I kept going until I reached 1610, wow. which was which was the year that um, uh, King Henry the Fourth of France was assassinated. Wow. Um, and Henry's Henry's wife was Marie de Medici, and Marie de Medici um, was well known to Sir Anthony Standen because he spent a lot of time working with her father, the Duke of Tuscany, in Florence when she was a young child. Wow. So I thought, well, here's a connection for, between, between, you know, King Henry in France, Marie de Medici and Sir Anthony, who already knows her. And uh, so I started plotting a, a book about that. And after Fire and Earth, where the, the theme was the conflict between faith and reason, um, I was looking for the theme for the suggested assassin. Yeah. And um, I was just sitting on the sofa with my wife one evening, and she was um, she was very angry about 
some act of misogyny, um, you know, sort of anti-feminism. Um, and it was around the time of the Me Too movement as well. Oh. And, and I just thought misogyny, gender equality, that that can be the theme of this book, because uh. at that time in France, there was something called Salic Law, which was... Uh, basically that no no woman could ever rule France. Mm. Um, and Queen Elizabeth I made a very good job of, of ruling England, and certainly our last Queen, Queen Elizabeth II made a very good job of it. So um, I have one of, well, Sir, Sir Anthony's eldest daughter, who plays a key role in The Suggested Assassin, and, and in oh. fact in Fire on Earth too. Um, I had her keep referring to it as satanic law rather than salic law. And he went, have, Sir Anthony have to correct us. I know it's, it's Salic law, not Satanic law. So basically, the theme under, underlying the suggested assassin is is gender inequality. Oh wow! I really love the sound of the suggested assassin. That sounds very amazing yeah. to me. Now, David, I'm curious to know if you experience any challenges while writing your book. Not only book books. You know, if there's any, could you share with us what challenge it is and how you ultimately overcame them? Um, the, I, the the challenge I find is is basically with historical fiction. It's I'm fighting a um, I'm constantly worried about having Sir Anthony eat something that hasn't arrived in Europe yet, or mm. or, or committing some other error that, mm. um, you know, that um, somebody somebody will say. Well, you know, and in fact, in towards the end of the Spy Who Sank the Armada. Sir Anthony is with the Earl of Essex on their sort of raid on Cadith and um, and the Azores, and I imagined um, Sir Anthony standing, peering ahead through his telescope, looking at the other ships. Mm. And then, thankfully, I thought, were telescopes invented then? So I looked it up, and no, they weren't. So I'd managed to avoid that mistake. Um, oh, wow. So, so research. Is is the answer to the challenge? The challenge is getting the hit all the history right, uh, but it's also probably the bit that I, I enjoy the most um, oh. in, in writing a, a series of historical fiction is the research. That's great. I really love you know the sound of this things you've mentioned and talk you've talked about. Now, I just want to ask you, David, how long do you intend to take your reader further? In the series of Sir Anthony Stardon Adventure, you know, you've got the one, you've got two, you've got three. Would you love to tell us a bit about the fourth book called To Account? Okay, the fourth book is called To Account. There it is. I love your um, designs. Yeah, Jacqueline Abramite's done a fabulous job, I think, on, on all these. I mean, they really stand together as a series, don't they? Yeah. When you look, yeah. It's all welded together. But again, it was a question of paging forwards through history. And with Call to Account, I got to the period from 1612 to 1614. Wow. And um, I won't tell you the name of the event because that gives away who the murderer is. Mm. <laughs> but it was a pogrom that happened in, in, in Frankfurt. Wow. And, um, and so it seemed to me that suddenly anti-Semitism, um, you know, Hitler didn't invent anti-Semitism. And... Uh, I thought that would that that that's a great theme to write about, and in that in that regard, anti-Semitism stands as a a placeholder, if you like, for racism in general. Mm. So I thought it was a very very topical book to to write, and thoroughly enjoyed writing it. Oh, actually, the thoroughly enjoyed writing it. I thought I ought to um, get into the mind of the of the main leader of this pogrom. Oh. Uh, which was a which was a very unpleasant place to be, um, inhabiting that mind full of hate. Uh, but you know, I'm I'm okay. I got out of it, and it, I think it gave me some useful insights onto his character. Yeah, that's great. I really love the sound of the series in Sir Anthony Adventure. It sounds yeah. very amazing to me. Thank and you. Yeah, and I want to ask you to David. Apart from the fourth book in the series of San Tony Star and Adventure so far, yeah, do you have any other works you've authored or you're currently working on? Uh, well, I'm I'm currently working on the fifth book in the series, but I I haven't worked out quite 
exactly what the story is yet. Um, I've read I've read a biography of Louis the Fourteenth, sorry Louis the Thirteenth of France, mm. who was um, King Henry the Fourth and Mary, Marie de Medici's son. Um, I've read um, a biography of Cardinal Richelieu, who plays a, a, a strong part in that, and of course is um, Alexander Dumas's villain in the um, the Three Musketeers. Mm. Um, I've I've re I've read a um, a bi Oh, and I'm reading a biography of, of, of Marie de Medici, so I'm, I'm getting ready for the for the fifth book. But my first my first book was this. It's a it's a textbook on project sponsorship, and I was commissioned by Gower Publishing, as it then was. I think it's now um, Routledge to write this book, and I enjoyed the process of writing it so much, and that feeling when this box of books arrives from the publisher publisher and it's got your name on it. Mm. that was such a thrill absolutely now i was i was i was already a um an addict of the open university which is our, our distance learning university oh. um, i had done an mba through them and i did a modern languages degree so i decided to do the creative writing and the and then the advanced creative writing courses yeah and um, um, my the first assignment I wrote on the creative writing course scored about 65%, I think. And my wow. tutor said, well, what, what, what is the point of this story? And I thought, um, well, what does he mean? And then we were watching a quiz show called University Challenge. And one of the questions was, um, who wrote the 10 basic plots or why we, no, sorry, the seven basic plots? Yeah. Or why we tell stories, and I said, "Well, I don't know, but I need that book." And uh, I have it here. Oh, wow. the Seven Basic Plots by Christopher Booker. And oh, wow. I after I read that, that, my second assignment scored scored about ninety five percent. Wow! And so I submitted that second short story in in a short story competition, and it was shortlisted, and it's the final short story in this book called something hidden by um totally. bridge house publishing wow and it, i guess it, i guess it was getting a short story published that made me think hey maybe i can write oh <laughs> that's actually great that's some accomplishment to me that's great that's fantastic and that textbook over there is very huge oh this one no, the other one, the white one, the one with the white cover you took from the shelf. Oh, oh, this one. Oh, yeah, it, it's really thick. It's um, 700. 728 pages. I can see. I can see it's 700 because I have <laughs> yeah. I have Book of yeah. Ben Nation here, so I can judge from my father. Yeah. It's around 700. That's a lot. Yeah. That's huge. Now, I just want to ask it, you. The, it was very informative. Yeah, I can see. I can see. Yeah, could you also tell us what publishing is like for a published author like yourself? What are the challenges you've you know, encountered in terms of marketing your books? Or what are the mediums you've utilized so far in promoting your book series? Uh, well, marketing is very much a work in progress. Um, I, I've submitted all of my Sir Anthony Standen um, adventures books to a number of... Um, editorial reviewers like so so kirkus um yeah. i'd find to be probably the most reliable and yeah. authoritative um i've submitted some of them to love reading in the uk um i've submitted them to um online book club and i've submitted to um the historical fiction company um but i think one of the antidotes to um you know the negative reviews is well you know if Kirkus thought it was a really good book then I think perhaps it it is absolutely um I I I um I paid for their discovery package the Kirkus discovery package which mm. involved you know having your book um singled out in 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 their magazine and, uh, yeah. and online and for the period that that ran I didn't sell, sell sell a single copy of any of the books, oh. so I thought, well, uh, the only good thing that came out of that was that 
Um, I had a couple of book publicists get in touch with me. Oh. And I worked, I've worked with a chap called Brian Feinblum in New York. And he he helped me quite a lot. He he got me an interview on um, Alan Warren's um, House of Mystery on NBC. So I had a radio interview with him a few months ago. Oh wow! Yes. Um, and and he, and he and he said, you know, how many how many Facebook friends have you got? And I said, well, I think it's about twenty. And he said, oh, that that that's nothing like enough. You need you need thousands. So so I've. I've I followed the steps that he had for increasing my number of Facebook followers. Yeah. And um well that 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 was good advice because you're a friend now and, and, and here I am talking to you. So, so that was good advice. Yeah, that's a good um, I, I've I've run the I've run our Amazon ad campaigns, mm. um both sponsored product and sponsored brand. The sponsored brand um Probably sold more books, but at a very high price. Oh. Um, and I've been gradually, tri gradually trimming the sponsored product um, advertisements to the point where you know, I'm now making more money from the from the book from the royalties than I'm spending on the advertisements. So that's oh. some progress. But there, there's still a lot. There are still a lot more things I can do. I, I haven't yet. Um, been in into the bookstores and said, you know, do you do author events and can we yeah. do one? Yeah, um, which I really should do because absolutely. We had a my wife is on my wife is on lots of committees in the village in which we live. Oh, and she said, do you want to have a table at the Christmas fair in our village hall? So I said, yeah, why not? I so I I bought a box load of books and I took them down to the village hall just before Christmas, and I sold out. Oh. So, um, and it was great fun talking to other people. Yeah, and uh, the, the the man who had the man who had the table next to me, um, he bought a set of all of all my books because his wife is a very keen reader. Oh, um, but she's also a member of a writer's circle, and oh. I've been looking for a writer's circle that I could join, oh. and so I'm now in that writer's circle. That's great. absolutely fabulous to. to <laughs> share ideas with different writers absolutely that's a great one i love this marketing strategies and everything you've mentioned they're quite amazing they're quite didactic and i can learn from them too so thank you for mentioning that yeah i just want to ask you david right. as thank a you. published author what sort of advice do you have mm. for other writers who are still struggling with publishing a book what did you tell people in this category well, I think one thing that's worth remembering is just thinking about the number of rejections that J.K. Rowling, mm. Ernest Hemingway, uh, um, um, you know, so many great authors. Absolutely. And there's, I joined the Crime Writers Association, and in, in they, they have a they have a magazine, magazine. A, a monthly newsletter, and I like the fact that the Crime Writers Association have a bulletin rather than a newsletter bullet oh. bulletin um oh. but there's a there's an article about john creasy um written by his son he was a he was a very big crime writer back in the 1950s oh. and um and he his, his son used to boast that his father was in the guinness book of records oh. um because not many not many of his friends had a, had a father who was in the guinness book of records but he was in the guinness book of records for the most because he'd, he'd amassed the a run of 743 rejection letters from oh. publishers. So, oh. you know, but he became he became uh the New York Times' bestseller back in, back in that back in the day. Wow. So remember the number of people who have been rejected. Um just keep writing. Um if you can join a writer circle, because I just think it's so useful for other writers to be you know, to, to have a support right. network. Absolutely. Uh, 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 and you can comment on their work and they can comment on yours. Absolutely. Um, I'd, I'd written letters of submissions to about half a dozen literary agents. Um, and I think I I got one rejection and didn't hear from the rest. Oh. Uh, so my, I, I've got a, I've got a pro I hired a professional editor because she was um, the editor who put this something hidden an anthology together. And uh, 
Debs Hobbs Wyatt is her name, and, and she said, well, one of my authors has huge success on on Kindle Direct Publishing, you know, Amazon. So I thought, well, let's give it a go. And I found Amazon to be a really easy tool to use for, for mm. getting your book published um, and marketing it. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. That's quite great. And at this point, David, I want to ask you, on what platform can readers purchase your book in case we add viewers who are interested in getting a copy? But there's only one, The Spy Who Sank the Armada. So, so <laughs> check for that. Um, uh, you can also buy it through my website, which is www.davidvswest.co.uk. The VS Victor Sierra. Sierra isn't my name. Spencer is, but Victor and Sierra, the NATO alphabet. Um, so it's www.davidvswest.co.uk. Um, and all, uh, my, all of my books are on um, Audible. So, uh, yeah, so the, the, the audio books are there too. That's great. And I've left a link in the description part of this interview where viewers can get a copy directly on Amazon, on David's website, and on other platforms. So thank you so much, David, for accepting yeah. the invitation to be featured on English Literature. It's a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much. And uh, it's real honor because you've had some very interesting authors on that you've interviewed. So I'm very happy to be here. Yeah, it's my pleasure.